Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about the basics of composition. So when you're presenting your work, having a good viewpoint, a good composition, good lighting is all really important. Especially since in 3D art, we don't start with composition, unlike painting or drawing, where they start by sketching things out and adding more details. We actually build our things and then we put them into a composition last. And this is where I see a lot of students say, oh, I've worked so many hours on this, so many days, so many weeks, so many months. I just want to put it up on the internet and just be done with it. But as I always say, 15 minutes of lighting is worth hours of modeling because setting up our image to look interesting is really important. Picking out where the colors are, where the shadows lie, how the surface is going to reflect light is going to take something relatively dull and make even a simple model like this treasure chest feel fun or interesting, shinier or newer. So what I want to introduce you to right now, and I'll talk about lights and camera in my Blender video, but I want to show you just a couple core rules to keep in mind when trying to compose interesting images. The first and maybe most common rule that you've probably already heard of is the rule of thirds. Any basic uh, filmmaking photography class is probably going to use one of these things first. And basically uh, what happens is when people are starting out, they often want to put things straight in the center of the frame because we think straight center is the most important, but straight center doesn't give us a lot of information. Instead, trying to break it into thirds is much more appealing and visually interesting to us. This actually happens all over the place, whether we're talking about the rule of thirds for comedy or for gameplay or other things. There's a reason bosses have generally three phases. Like threes are very, very common because three presents a balance. Two is just left and right, and three lets you kind of have a balancing factor between all three elements. And so it makes for much more satisfying compositions that are still relatively simple. So for instance, the horizon line has been placed on the top third, but sort of this area where the lake goes into these, these wooden leftovers of a dock are in the lower third area. We've also thirded off where the sailboat is, and we've also thirded off where the rock is. And what it does give us right now is because there's all this space in the middle here for the sailboat, we have a mental image of where it can go next. It gives the image movement where it wouldn't otherwise have movement. Even though it's a still image, we understand the directionality of the sailboat, which is really important to give us space to understand the composition. At the same time, the slope of this composition here helps point us in the direction of the sailboat as well. These key points, the little crosses on a composition are really important areas where we call these sort of action zones. These are in a film where you're gonna see characters' faces most frequently. So like a character might be face one face here and one face down there and they're looking up at each other because this zone should be empty so that there's space for things to happen inside of. Just like if you're talking to someone, you have a space in between you and them. That's the zone your conversation's happening in. The next thing I want you to think about is balance versus symmetry. Balance, as I mentioned back when we were talking about color, is really important because it helps us denote, uh, it helps us, makes it feel more sophisticated. It helps us say these things have equal importance and it helps redirect our eyes to what we do want to look at. And most often when you see people start out, and especially graphic design, they want to do completely symmetrical. Because symmetry is a form of balance. If I take a point and I put the same weight on the left and right side, it's balanced. But it's much more interesting to create a balance that uh, sort of has a heavy weight on one end and a lightweight on the other end, but it's very far from the fulcrum, to use the balancing board uh, an analogy. And it creates something more sophisticated and it draws the line more. So these cars are in balance because the first car is large and forward into the frame, but as we go further up, the cars get smaller but higher in the frame. And we understand that they have relative importance from height to size. And so with that height size, we're balancing the composition and also creating some empty space here that's shaped like a triangle so that our eyes lead up into these rows of cars in the distance. These windmills are, it's an interesting and it's a nice silhouette. However, the windmills and the scene here is very flat. There's no depth to the frame. And so it's very even and flat versus this one has a lot of overlapping shapes that give us a lot of sense of strong depth, which makes it feel more satisfying. Also, I think a mistake some people make is they often want to show the whole object or feel it's really important to. One of the nice things about 3D art is we take as many pictures as we want of the object. It's really easy. And so more often than not, the most interesting image isn't the one that shows everything. It's the one that shows the close-up or interesting detail. If you look at any good art station art post, 
they're never the thumbnails are never a silhouette of the whole character they're usually a close-up of something interesting to look at because that little piece of juicy tantalizing information draws us in more we don't need to see the beginning and end of these logs we don't need to see the crane we understand the story here by focusing in on what's just important and getting to see some of these really rich details we also want to be thinking about as we're talking about depth our foreground our midground and our background so this is really important because again like i showed with the windmills it's very flat this is much more interesting because it goes into the frame we see in the background there's more trees and we can see the atmosphere effect so less saturation they become a little dimmer a little grayer versus these trees in the foreground which aren't as affected by atmosphere are much stronger we see more detail less detail and we see sort of this midground area where the action of the scene might happen and this helps us understand a context of the whole scene and helps us feel like we're physically there and not just looking into an image Leading lines are another way of drawing your attention. You see this a lot with travel photography, of uh, bridges, railroads, subway tunnels. They love to have this single, and it's very symmetrical too, but it's also very balanced with fence, not fence. But these leading lines help us to feel like we're on a journey or we're heading somewhere. Always think about the direction of your lines and what they're showing us. Depth is also really important when we talk about what foreground, midground, background. Sometimes putting objects very close and out of focus helps us feel like we're in this bush, we're in this scene, we're in the middle of this nature. So I'm gonna do all of these. I'm gonna show you in this piece by uh, Tony we uh, Wexy, Wexy um, which is a really nice little art piece I found on ArtStation and show you how these rules are being used here. So for one, let's take a look at our kind of rule of thirds and we can see by drawing over it, like some of these key areas are hitting into these quadrants already. I'm not being super precise, but you can see where this sort of entrance is sort of in this third, and this statue is over in this third. I'm a little rough on it, not exactly precise, but it's close to it, and we can see these action points that are showing us segments of our whole composition coming together here. Another one up. So, talking now about something like uh, leading lines, we can see that the perspective of this image and the leading lines of this right here help direct us to this color contrast focal point. The character walking into the entrance of this object, and even the boat here, by its directionality, is pointing towards our character. Our leading lines all show us where we're going next. Thinking now a little bit, uh, undo that because I accidentally drew on the wrong layer, Andrew. Let's get that. And now, looking at this, we also can see foreground so it's a little covered up here but we have a dark foreground object helping us feel like we're in the scene we have mid-ground objects that we understand are the next level closest to us and then we have sort of our background our stuff that's feeding in to the far far distance so you can see good composition gives us and it's not just a straight on too it's kind of an interesting angle to it it's got an interesting slant to it helps us push into the frame. And we also don't see the whole temple. We don't see the whole statue. We're filling the frame with the whole composition. So again, if you're looking for ways of doing interesting composition, take a piece of art you like, just draw over it. You'll learn a lot just by copying over top of some of the interesting elements you see and figuring out how those little details and shapes give you ideas about where your eye is gonna go next. All right, cool, I'll see you in the next one.